Good morning, good morning, good morning to uh, all my fellow beardists, beard enthusiasts, beard lovers. Um, this is Mr. I Rock a Beard coming to you with episode three of Brew with the Beard. Today is Saturday, June 29th of 2019, and wanted to welcome everybody to the third episode, third installment of um, Brew with the Beard. Got a couple of things I'd like to talk about today, but I just wanted to wish everybody a wonderful weekend. I hope you had a productive and blessed week. This week started off a little rough for me, but I'm glad that the work week itself is over. Um, definitely needed the break. And I hope the same for everybody that is listening today. Again, got a couple of things that I'd like to talk about, a couple of things that have been on my mind over the past seven days. And um, again, I hope I don't have the, uh, the corrupted file uh, again, that happened last week or the week before last where I had to re-record, but um, let's hope that that doesn't happen. Anyway, uh, Brew for the Week. Brew for the Week is going to be uh, H-E-B Chai Tea, Chai Tea from H-E-B. Now, you're probably wondering, Noel, if anybody that knows me, Noel, Brew with the Beard, normally we think of you to drink something alcoholic, maybe rum and coke gin and tonic, any of your favorites, even hood moses. A couple of people actually uh, shouted me out last week and said that they enjoyed that. Never thought to mix, <laughs> never thought to mix beer and orange juice. But, you know, a couple of people texted me and they were like, well, that, that sounds gross. I said, well, think about it. It's, it's the same thing as a mimosa. A mimosa is champagne and orange juice. Just try it with some beer. You know, it tastes actually, it actually tastes pretty good. And I got a, I got quite a bit of feedback saying that it's actually pretty good, um, even from people that don't like beer necessarily. So um, had a good time with that. So shout out to my boy uh, Carl Samuels, uh, aka Mr. He's uh, Mr. He's so funny for that suggestion years ago. Yeah, I was one of those people that didn't believe it, like beer and orange juice. I'm not drinking that, but it's actually very very delicious. Um, so. That was last week, but this week I'm drinking chai tea. Reason why I'm drinking tea this morning is because I do plan to work out later on this this morning, and I don't want to start my day off with a hood mosa or a rum and coke and then go to the gym in 98 degree weather today in Houston. So I'm good. I'm pumping my brakes. So I'm doing the responsible thing today. So after I come back from my workout, though, you better believe that something will be in my cup. Anyhow, so I'm drinking my chai tea today. So um, to all my tea drinkers, man, you know, this is a, this is kind of like a, a time stamp, you know, a, a seal stamp, you want to say, in the Caribbean um, community. You got to drink tea in the morning. People that say they like to get that gas out of your stomach or get that air out of your stomach. And a lot of people like to drink hot tea. So um, shout out to all my tea drinkers um, out there. I haven't had uh, a tea in a while. But today, I think it's necessary. Chai tea is good for calming effects. If you're ever feeling like you're you're anxious about something or you're ever feeling like um, you're a little stressed, chai tea actually does have um, some, some, from what I read and from what I've experienced, it does have some calming effects to those who drink it. And it is a good um, source um, for energy, a nice energy boost that I get when I drink my chai tea. So shout out to all my tea drinkers. And yes, I leave the tea bag in the cup. That adds more flavor. Some people like to throw it away. I like to keep it. So shout out to all my tea drinkers out there. Oh, that's delicious. Anyhow, um, a couple of things that I wanted to talk about this week, and then I'll get to the questions. Um, got some good questions this week, which I'm very, very happy about. Um, but I wanted to talk about etiquette and courtesy. Uh, I, I think that this is something that has been flushed down the toilet especially in our society today, that a lot of people don't know anything about etiquette, about saying please and thank you and about being empathetic. There's just something about being rude and being nasty to people that is that is the thing now. It's the thing where you don't necessarily have to say thank you and please. And what brought this to the forefront for me was this week at work. Um, there was a young lady that I was walking behind me coming into the building for the morning. And I knew that she was getting into the same, same elevator bank that I was getting into. Didn't know what floor she was going to, but I knew she was getting in the same elevator because I'd seen her before. 
So it was just she and I. And I went and caught the elevator. I knew she was coming, but she happened to be walking and texting. So, I mean, if that's what you choose to do, you know, a lot of people do that. I'm guilty of that at times, especially if I have to respond to something fairly quickly. I'll walk and text. However, one thing that I won't do is somebody holds a door for me or somebody does something for me that is courteous, I will say thank you. So as we're walking, um, it took her a couple of steps to get to the elevator that I was in, but I had my umbrella holding the door open. And this young lady just walked right in, pushed her floor and just kept her head in the phone. No headphones or anything like that. So she knew I was standing there and she saw my umbrella. So in my head, I'm like, but wait a minute. I didn't have to hold this fucking elevator for you. Like, what makes you think that I was just supposed to do that? You know, what 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 kind of what kind of thought process is behind that? Well, he's in the elevator. He held the elevator door for me. Not even a th- not even a good morning and a th- not even a good morning. Nothing. Just walks right in, presses her, f- her her floor, and it keeps her head in her phone. So as we're going up in the elevator, I say to her, "Oh, I understand that that was my job to do that, and uh, you don't necessarily have to say anything, but." You know, I understand it was my job to hold the elevator for you. And you're welcome. I mean, really? What whatever happened to people being courteous and people being thankful for things? You know, I, I see sometimes that, you know, people will order food and they're rude to the people that are preparing their food or the people that are at the register that are, you know, ringing up their food. I'm just like... You don't know what kind of message that they can communicate to those people in the back that are communi- that are cooking your food. But why would you be rude to anybody? I'm not saying that some people don't deserve a curt response to something. If somebody is a little snippy with you or somebody's a little um, out of pocket with you, sometimes you might have to meet them at their level. And that's fine. But if somebody's doing you a service preparing your food or, or doing your hair, any type of service, driving you somewhere, like, you know, taxi driver, Uber driver, whatever the case is, why would you be rude to anybody that could potentially hold some sort of, some part of your life in their hands, whether it's the food you eat, the destination you're going to, how you're going to look, like, really? So you're, you're that self-centered and you're that caught up in yourself that you don't believe in being courteous or being kind to people. That's what I don't get. And then what happens is we wonder where kids get it from. When kids don't say please and thank you, and they're not generous or courteous to other kids, when they start bullying other kids, we want to know where that comes from. It's such a disgusting thing to watch, especially with adults. And, you know, we're so caught up in our cell phones and so caught up in technology and social media that we don't really see a need for it. And to me, that's disturbing. The reason why that's disturbing is because, again, we're, we're bringing up a society of kids who think that social media is everything and what they see on social media is the right thing to do. So if they see people being discourteous, not saying thank you, not saying please, they're going to grow up and not do the same thing. And they will wonder, well, where are they getting these behaviors from? It's from us. I never, I never let a day go by and somebody does something for me. First of all, I don't ask for anything, but if somebody does something for me out of the kindness of their heart, you got to thank them. At what point is it okay for me to just think that somebody's supposed to do something for me, that the world owes me something? Give me a break. We got to stop that, man. That's that's it's terrible. You know, I don't know where courtesy and and etiquette is gone. You know, I I hear people on the phone all the time, you know, and they're supposed to be in customer service and never thank the customer. Never thank them for calling without them. You wouldn't have a fucking job. You know, I mean. I I just don't get it. You know, where where is it going? You know, I'm not saying that the customer is always right. And you don't get those customers sometimes that are that are rude and discourteous and just off the bat, they're just disgusting with you. But at the end of the day, you're still in the service industry. And there's st- still a certain standard that you're being held to. And you need to uphold that. You know? Other civil servants, like police officers and, and firefighters, I mean, 
I've seen these these civil service people, even people that are EMTs and doctors and nurses, like, where do you come off being rude? You know, I'm coming to you for help. Where do you come off being rude to me? You know, no bedside manners, no, no, no type of courtesy. You know, I'm calling you for help. I need your help and you're you're nasty with me. I just don't I don't understand where the discourteous spirit has come from. I don't know where it's coming from. And I don't know why it's still here, but it's something that needs to be addressed at, at the lowest level, which is which, which is our kids, and at the highest level with adults. It's something that we need to teach people that this is something that's necessary for us to survive. At least in my opinion. That's what I think. Um another thing that I wanted to talk about was uh I actually got into a show recently, um, two shows that I never thought in my life that I would even sit down and actually watch because I don't do the whole reality TV thing. I don't do, you know, the real housewives of West Bubble. I don't do all that sort of stuff. However, I have gotten hooked onto Married at First Sight and 90 Day Fiance. Now, for your judge me, understand that these shows are actually pretty interesting and they're a great in-depth take on the human psyche when it comes to trying to find love. I mean, I guess people have been, a lot of people have been so burned in their past relationships and trying to date, you know, trying to find the right person that they're willing to try anything to find love, to get married. And for me, what tripped me out at first is that I always thought that these type of shows, they're making a mockery of the institution of relationships and the institution of marriage. In that you're going to put two perfect strangers together based on the things that they've desired. And you've put together like this questionnaire and they've answered these questions. And the, the two people that match the best, you're going to put them together for a certain amount of time. You're going to marry them. The first time they meet, you're going to put them together for a certain amount of time. And then at the end, the, the conclusion of that time period, you're going to bring them back together and say, hey, this is what we've observed over this amount of time. Do you want to stay married? Do you want to get a divorce? And those options, when I was growing up, you know, it was really just one option, which was to stay together unless you're in an abusive relationship or, um, you know, things really just were not, they were at a point where they just really were not working out. Maybe you fought too much or somebody stepped out of the marriage, just out of the, out of the relationship. Then you, 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 you got a divorce, but for the most part, you know, people stayed together, you know, especially if they had kids, but this you're on TV and you're showing the entire world, your business and People are watching and they're going on social media and they're making comments about your relationship with this perfect stranger. This is one thing, one thing that people are not realizing that you're getting married or getting engaged to a perfect stranger. Of course, things are going to be awkward. Things are going to be weird. There's going to be a learning curve, you know, but just to see how quickly people are willing to show their asses on these shows, I'm talking about like episode two or three, like during the honeymoon, like people's real characters come out. I mean, some of the nasty shit that I've seen people do on this show in front of a perfect stranger that you just married and just got engaged to, it's mind blowing. You go on a vacation or you go on your honeymoon with a stranger, right? You would think at that point you're going to exhibit your best behavior, but you come straight in from the airport and the first thing you do is jump on the fucking bed with your dirty ass sneakers on and then put your luggage that has been on a dirty, disease infested, airborne, Zika, all kind of shit that's on that plane that they probably don't clean. And you put your luggage on the bed that you're going to sleep in. Oh, that is gross. That is so disgusting. 
that is the most that is one of the most disgusting things I have ever seen in my life. And nine out of ten people on this show, when they're ready to go on vacation or going to see somebody, they put their luggage on the bed and then they they get in the bed with the same clothes that they were on the plane with. Why? First of all, let me tell you something. If I was ever on that show or any one of those shows and I saw that, and I saw that, I'm out. That means this person is absolutely, dis this person probably doesn't even bathe in the morning before they go to work. That's gross. Luggage on the bed and then, and, and then you're getting on the bed, in the bed with your, with your street clothes and your sneakers on. And you're gonna sleep there? Put your, that is gross. Absolutely gross. Absolutely gross. Okay, and that's married at first sight. Okay, married at first sight. You get all your quirks out of whatever. 90 Day Fiance, these are people that are seeking love with people that don't live in the country, right? These are normally people that don't live in the country. They're, they're not of this country, but they find this love, right? And then these people come to America seeking love, but yet all their actions show you that they're really not seeking love. They're really just trying to get in the country. Like, I mean, I, I watched the episode the other day and uh, this dude met this this chick from, I think she was from Ecuador or one of those uh, uh, countries in South America. And they met in America and fell in love. And the idea was that instead of her coming to America to live with him, he would go to South America to live with her and her family and start a life. Well, here's the twist. The guy sold his house, his condo, excuse me, sold his car, took out all of his life savings, quit his job, and just took bare necessities, his clothes, whatever, whatever, and left every every everything, every other thing behind to be with this young lady in South America. Hopped on a plane, one-way ticket to South America. Gets out of the plane into the airport, passes customs and everything, gets to the airport. And you see all these families lined up with their signs and people are lined up waiting for their family members to get off this plane. And this jackass <laughs> gets out of the plane and is looking for this young lady, his fiance, is looking for his fiance at the airport, nowhere to be found. He's like, where are you, beautiful? I can't see you. Where are you? Walking all over the airport, can't find him. He calls her and he says, hey, beautiful. She answers the phone like, oh, hey. She's not even excited to talk to you. Knew you were coming in today from America. It's probably five, six hour flight. Not even excited when she picks the phone up. She's like, oh, oh hey. He's like, hey, uh, I'm landed. I'm at the airport through customs. Um, where are you? Are you are you on your way? She's like, no, I'm I'm still home. You're still home. Why are you why are you still home? Did you did you remember I was coming in today? Yeah, I remembered. So why are you not here? I, I couldn't make it. Sorry. You could take the bus though. What? What? <laughs> Wait. You have me fly in from the United States to South America to be with you and your family, to start a life. And we're gonna set this off by me taking a bus in a country that I don't know anything about. And not only that, you don't even tell me which bus to get on. You just tell me, oh, you can take the bus. Just ask somebody. What the fuck? Are you serious? So let me get this straight. I pick up and move my entire life to be with you and I gotta take a bus to your crib? You, and he, he had the nerve to stay on the phone with this chick, like on the phone, upset, like, wow, so you're really not. She told me all she needed to tell me at that point, if that was me. You better believe I'm turning right back around and getting my re return flight back to America. Why the, really? So I'm going to risk not only probably 
getting robbed, beat down. I, I stand out like a sore thumb in this country. People know I'm not from here with all these blasted bags that I got. And I'm going to get on a bus to, to come. With, it's, it's quite evident that you don't want me at this point because not even to meet me at the airport, bro, like you're, you're kidding me, right? So I got to take this bus to somewhere I don't know. And then you're probably not even going to greet me at the door. You're probably going to make me ring the bell, <laughs> ring the bell. And you're probably going to take your sweet time in answering. Like, why would I, why would I do that? It just trips me out to see how people in this day and age have gotten, for lack of a better term, so desperate to find love that they're willing to risk it all. I'm not saying sometimes it doesn't work out because it does. People fall in love. You know, at first sight, sometimes people fall in love. First time they meet somebody, maybe it takes time and people move together, whatever it is. But shit, like, not even to meet me at the airport, bro. Like, that's not enough of a sign for me to head for the hills to run back to what I know. It's not that hard to start back over. I mean, you're going back to America, a place that you've lived all your life. But now you're in South America, and this chick doesn't even come to the airport. Don't even send somebody that she knows, a friend of hers or a family member to come pick you up. And you're going to stay? Yeah, you tripping. Not me. Mm -mm. I mean, all these dating apps. And I, I, I don't get it. it. Personally, it's not for me. I, I just really... South America, like any any other country, even if it was another state, it's like, you can't meet me at the fucking airport or send somebody to meet me at the airport. And I'll call you and you're just like, oh, hey, yeah, I'm still in bed. You can take the bus. What? Man, it, it could have been from one end of Brooklyn to the other. I am not getting on no fucking bus to meet nobody, knowing that I was, this is supposed to be my fiance. And you're going to allow me to take a bus to where you're at? Now we good. Return ticket one time. Again, shout out to anybody that takes the risk of finding love in a different place, picking up your life to move to be with somebody. But when you see those red flags, you're not coming to meet me at the airport. I'll call you and you're not even excited that I'm here. You're just like, oh, hey. I'm bothering you? Like, I, I just flew six hours, some odd thousand miles, and then I'm going to get on a bus to come to you, and you're not even remotely it. I'm good. I'm good. But I am addicted right now to these shows to see what happens next. If anybody has a link, and I don't promote privacy, uh, not privacy, piracy of shows, but if anybody has a link where I can get these episodes ahead of time, where I can binge watch, please send them to me. 90 Day Fiance, Married at First Sight. They are mind-blowingly hilarious, but there's certain things about these shows that you got to take serious, man, because people really believe in these things. And as a psychology major, somebody who studies people uh, based on the industry that I work in, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's like watching, it's like, it, it's so entertaining to watch because again, there's certain moments where it's sad to see people go through some of the things that they go through, but then it's hilarious because they put themselves in that situation. So uh, Married at First Sight, 90 Day Fiance, does, if anybody has a link or to where I can get some of these episodes ahead of time, that'd be great. If not, I can be patient and I can wait week after week to watch these, but Shout out to all the fans, uh, to the producers and the fans of that show, those two shows. Um, so, yeah, now we can get to the questions of the week. Thank you to everybody who continues to submit uh, questions, comments. A lot of these questions sometimes, um, they do get, for lack of a better term, repetitive. I mean, they're asked in different ways, but they're sometimes the same questions. Also, just re re remember that they don't necessarily have to be questions about beard care, hair care, it can be about anything, you know, it can be about politics, anything that's social that's going on, um, could be about anything. And I, of course, I'll um, review the questions before the end of the week, and I'll submit the best three um, to get answered. 
So uh, the first question of the week, this comes from Q. Uh, Q, uh, it says, hey, Rock, quick question for you. Um, you mentioned on a previous post that you shape yourself up rather than going to a barber. I've been doing this for years. Um, it took one time for, actually, two, two incidents happened. It took the first time for a barber to fuck my hairline up right before the prom this was back in 1998. I'll never forget this. Dude, the, 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 the bar shop was on Nostrand Avenue in Brooklyn, Nostrand and Foster. I'll never forget this. Dude chopped my hairline to bits. Why? Because he was too busy in the barber shop arguing with some of the other barbers and customers about some shit that had nothing to do with cutting hair. And of course, I had been to him before. Never messed my hairline up, but this time the man had my hairline on one of those cheese wedge slants. So my hairline went like this. And once I realized it, I had already paid him. And at that point, I wasn't in, into the whole getting into an argument, getting into a conflict. I just left and I went home and fixed my own hairline. So that was one incident. And the other incident was when I had a barber stand me up two days in a row. Had me waiting at the shop for like an hour, hour and a half and never showed up. So from that, those moments on, never went back to another barber. Anyway, um, he says, uh, yeah, I know you shape yourself up but rather than going to a barber. He says, I do the same, but my clippers always cut my face up. Yeah, that, that, that's an issue. Uh, that's an issue. Any ideas on how to remedy this? Thanks. Um, yeah, there, there's several YouTube videos, depending on the brand of your clippers. There are several YouTube videos that you can actually pull up that'll teach you how to adjust the clipper blades. Um, if they're cutting your lineup and they're cutting your face up when you're doing it, the only advantage to that when they're too sharp is that you get a really crisp lineup. But within a day or two, what's going to happen is you start, you're going to start to develop those black lines because of the scabs. And those black lines are very, very hard to get rid of. You can use um, different types of cocoa butter to get rid of them, but it will take some time. So my suggestion is, depending on the brand of your clippers, I use Andis, the Andis Outliner 2s, uh, not the T ones, the, the regular size ones. So what you do is um, you type in the name of the name brand of your clippers, and you can easily put how to adjust the blade on whatever the, the, the name brand of your clippers are. And there are tutorials on how to do it to adjust the blade to the right setting. So that way you're not only getting a crisp lineup, but it's not cutting your face up. Um, that's one of the, the, the that's, that's such a bad thing to do um, when you're looking to shape yourself up is to have that burning sensation when you're cutting your, 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 your uh, when you're lining yourself up, you get a sharp line, but then your face is on fire and then you don't want to put on alcohol because then it's going to burn and then all, all that sort of stuff. So I've actually learned through YouTube how to adjust my clipper blades. So again, get the name brand of your clippers, um, the specific name brand, and then go to YouTube and say how to adjust the blades on such and such and such. And then you can find a couple of tutorials on how to adjust it to your liking. So that would be my suggestion to you. Okay, Q, thank you very much for, for your submission. Uh, next question. Uh, it says, hola, Noel. Hola, I guess we speak in Spanish today. Uh, I'm so proud of you and what you are doing. Keep up the great work. Okay, thank you very much. I sincerely appreciate that. My question of the week is, do you ever think of cutting your hair or your beard? And this comes from Amanda. Okay, Amanda, thank you very much for your submission. Recently, no. Recently, no, I've, I haven't given uh, cutting my beard or my, my locks um, any thought. However, in the beginning stages, sometimes in the middle stages, I have thought about it. I have thought about it, especially with my locks when I was going through what they call the ugly stage, when your locks are not, they're not short anymore, when you can kind of put a do-rag on them, but they're not long enough where you can really style it. So I do, I did have those moments where I wanted to cut my locks, um, where I missed having my low haircut, my Caesar. Um, but as I've going through the journey of growing my locks um, and I see how they're starting to look and I've been able to style them in different ways and, you know, put them in a bun and stuff like that. Never actually thought about cutting my locks. Now my beard, only in the beginning stages, only in the beginning stages when uh, it was a shadow and you had that itchy stage where the hair was now growing back on your face and, you know, 
it was starting to itch and it just didn't look good at that point. Um, but when it started to thicken out, and once it started to grow and I got my, a little bit more mass on the beard, never thought about cutting my beard. Um, and I actually started growing my hair because uh, I had um, my older brother who had passed away in 2014. He, um, this was his look, you know, long beard, locks, um, and unfortunately, he was taken from this earth prematurely. Um, and this was his look. So this is kind of in remembrance of him. Um, rest in peace, D. But um, yeah, I haven't recently thought about cutting my locks or cutting my my beard for any reason. I'm actually enjoying the journey um, as I grow both. Will I eventually probably trim my beard? Maybe been giving that some thought, but to cut it off or to go back to a goatee or, you know, low facial hair. No, I'm, I'm actually very, very happy where I'm at now. But Amanda, thank you very much for submitting that question. Last question of the week. Uh, it says, yo rock, love the show. You are hilarious. Uh, some people will <laughs> beg to differ. They don't think I'm funny at all. You know, I, I think I'm funny, you know, but some people may not agree, but whatever. I think that's funny too, that you don't think I'm funny. Anyway, um, <laughs> you are hilarious. My question is not beard related, okay. Um, what are your vices, the things that you absolutely cannot live without? And this comes from Jay Negro out of BK. Okay, Jay Negro out of BK. What are my vices? Well, <sighs> I, have, I have a few, I have a few. Um, if we're talking about food vices, Pizza, you, you can't, you can't, I don't care how I'm dieting. I don't care if I'm on a health kick, you know, where I'm only drinking uh, my protein shakes and I'm only eating green and vegetables and lean meat. If you put pizza in front of me, all bets are off. I, 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 I'm addicted to pizza. And I don't mean just commercial pizza, like the Domino's and the Pizza Hut's. I'm talking about some authentic New York pizza. I never, I've never had pizza from anywhere else other than in Barbados. And the pizza in Barbados is actually very delicious. They put a lot of things on top as toppings that you would never think that would go on a pizza, but it's actually pretty good. But pizza, pizza's one vice. Um, macaroni pie. Macaroni pie is absolutely a vice to me at any Caribbean cookout, Caribbean restaurant. I've actually learned to make macaroni pie myself now. Yes, 38 years later, I finally learned how to make a mac pie. But yes, it is a vice. I don't care what else is being served at the barbecue, at the cookout, at the Caribbean restaurant. You better believe when they have macaroni pie and it's available and it's fresh, I will get a portion of that macaroni pie. It's delicious, especially when you throw in some oxtail gravy, stewed chicken gravy, or curry goat gravy. Oh, macar fresh macaroni pie. One of the absolute best foods to ever have in your life. And if you don't know what a macaroni pie is, please Google it. Caribbean macaroni pie, how to make it. Some people call it mac and cheese. Mac and cheese is a little different. Macaroni pie is a delicacy throughout the Caribbean. So macaroni pie, please Google that. Google how to make it. If you want to try it, macaroni pie. Another vice. Um, another vice that I have is orange juice. Completely addicted. Can't live without it. The first 48, another vice. I will glue my ass to a couch just to watch old and new episodes of the first 48. Martin is another one. Um, got a couple of vices, man, that I, that I absolutely cannot live without. Another one that I'm not necessarily proud of to share with you guys, world star hip hop. And I don't, I don't necessarily like ignorance. I don't like to see, especially my people doing ignorant shit, but for some reason, World Star Hip Hop has been a vice of mine for like the last decade. The fight comps, the fails, even sometimes when some of these dumbass, corny, mumbling ass, tight jean wearing, 
pants sagging, doped up rappers come out with these stupid ass songs. Sometimes I have to sit and watch just to see that my intelligence level is on a higher plane than something. Some people rap some of the dumbest shit, yet they have fans and they make money. I don't understand. Like some of the crap that people put to a beat. Don't get me wrong. The beats, nine times out of ten, the beats are off the chain. But really, like, you, 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 you. anyway. So yes, world star hip hop is a, is a vice. Um, what else is a vice? For now, I can share that those those are a couple of my vices. You know, the things that I'm absolutely addicted to. Again, don't put pizza in front of me. Don't put macaroni pie. Red pea soup, don't put that in front of me. And if you if your red pea soup does not have dumplings in it, please do me a favor, choke yourself. Any soup. You can't you can't make soup without dumplings. Like anybody that does not put dumplings in this soup, I think worships Satan. And you should probably hang yourself from a two-story building. You you, you don't you don't make soup with, without dumplings. It's it's like it's like it's like stealing from church. You just don't do it, you know. Um, but yeah, those are my vices. Um, thank you very much for your submission, uh, Jay Negro. Um, definitely appreciate the love and support. Um, but yeah, guys, I, I definitely uh, want to thank everybody for even sitting and listening to me ramble for the last thirty six minutes. Um, but I got a, a lot of exciting things that are coming within the next couple of weeks, next couple of months. Um, definitely made some great connections this week. Um, looking to promote a couple of products that are on the market right now for beard care, for hair care. Um, so looking forward to um, continuing those connections that I made this week. Got a, a, a host of um, program and workshop ideas that I'm um, looking to move forward with before the end of the year. So look out for those. Um, but yes, uh, guys, again, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Brew with the Beard. I appreciate all the love and support. Continue to submit your questions, submit your comments, anything you want me to talk about on the uh, on the video blog or on the video podcast here. Please submit them. I continue to follow the page at I Rock a Beard on IG and oh. Also, you can go to the website, uh, irockabeard.com, for any latest updates on episodes, on programs, on different things. So I appreciate the love and support. Everybody have a wonderful, wonderful Saturday. Have a wonderful weekend. And I will uh, see you guys in another two weeks with episode four. Peace and love. <laughs>